All right, so we're coming out here to, we're gonna do some shooting at 100 yards with the CZ. Let's uh, look at the temperature real quick. We're at about 33 degrees or so. All right, well, first off, we're gonna talk about the changes I made to the CZ. The barreled action, everything's the same. What we did change is the chassis. So we went to the MDT XRS chassis. Couple of reasons for that. The main reason that I changed this chassis is because of the location of the grip. Now on the uh, the Manor stock, this the the finger placement part of the grip is way back here. And I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but so when I was when I was on the trigger, oh, let's simulate this way back here, I could only get like the tip of my finger on the trigger. So I think it was really causing me some consistency problems. So now when I put my hand on here, I can get the, the meat part of my finger on the trigger consistently every time. And that's the key, consistency. When you're shooting for groups, Consistency is your friend. Uh, it's it's actually essential for good groups. Uh, you know, your your finger placement to where you put the buttstock on your shoulder. I like to put mine between. There's like a little bone right there in your between your shoulder and your collarbone area. I like to put put that in there because I know that it's in the same spot every single time. And I like to use finger placement on the trigger uh, in, in such a manner so that I'm doing it the same way every single time. And it's all about consistency because that, you know, just the, the placement of your the buttstock can cause the, you know, if you do that differently, it can cause, excuse me, it can cause the, the rifle to recoil differently. So... It's all about consistency. If there's something that you can change about your rifle that would promote consistency, I would highly recommend you do it because it's gonna make you a hell of a lot more accurate. All right, well, let's talk about the stock real quick. So the stock is made of a very, very dense polymer. I mean, this thing is like bomb proof. It, it's so solid feeling. Now granted, you know, the, it's got a, it's got a metal backbone or aluminum backbone, but and the aluminum backbone goes from, from here all the way down into the grip area and then the rest of it's pretty much polymer from what I understand. Uh, but this is a very, very rigid stock. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, I was not gonna drop, you know, $1,500 for uh for one of the uh, flagship MDTs, I just I just don't have it like that. But honestly, uh, it's a very rigid stock. The only thing I would change on it would be the heads of these screws are kind of well in it cheap. Uh, I would probably have done something a little bit more with like a knurled aluminum or something. Um, this is a, it's a plastic knob and. It just doesn't feel like you get the get it tight enough. Now you do. This this does end up being the the cheek rest does end up being tight enough, and it and it does work. But you know, it just seems kind of cheap. But other than that, I mean, oh, and then the other thing I love about this is the the texture of the uh, the grip. This is rubber right here, and it's a very very uh, very comfortable rubber. It's, it's real uh, similar to the uh, AR style precision grip that they have, that, the big one that's adjustable forward, back, and you can can it. Uh, it's, it's a very, very comfortable grip. And, you know, comfort, and it's, it's very comfortable, very well made, and the ergonomics are absolutely perfect. One more thing I want to talk about. Now, I know a lot of you guys shooting out there, you know, you want to get into precision rifle and whatnot, and, and you just don't. I mean, this can be a super, super expensive sport. And if you want to 
decent tripod that does not cost a lot of money. This is a, a slick AMT. It's it's very reasonable. I think it was just over a hundred bucks for the tripod and it's fully adjustable. Um, it does have the flip locks on it. It's got rubber feet, nice rubber feet. And I added the, uh, the pouch here, but uh, you know, the, the controls on it aren't, aren't as precise as some of them. Like this is a, a plastic twist knob and then, you know, this is plastic, but it's very well, very well made. And then I put a, a camera head on it, a real heavy duty camera head. And I'll, I'll put the, uh, I'll show you on screen what exactly I bought here. But I mean, I've got this whole, this whole rig. I don't think I've got even $200 into it. So if you guys are looking for a tripod, you don't want to spend a lot of money. This is a very, very, very good option. Okay, so I want to talk about the target that we're going to be using here. It's a Birchwood Casey um, Dirty Bird target. It's got 16 spots on it. And the thing that, that uh, kind of, when I first started shooting these targets, what, what makes it a little uh, different is the center spot here is only half inch. The red the red spot is only half an inch so the second ring is an inch so when we're shooting these groups it's going to look like the groups are bigger than they actually are and uh just something i wanted to talk about now these dirty bird targets they don't they don't do the big splats like the um like the others that i've been using been trying to get a video out this week but it's been awful hard i've been having lots of technical difficulties uh had a um video going with the kid and the budget rifle up against each other but the kid didn't want to cooperate having a lot of cycling problems with that one so hopefully uh kid will uh get this solved for me soon uh but anyways let's get to today's video today we're going to do some lot testing at 100 yards with the cz 457 i've got four different lots of ely saber to try out so here we go top left Feet per second on this uh, first ammunition is 1045. bad. All right, next one. Boy, it's so nice when you're shooting a group and you're shooting at the center of the bullseye and every round goes where it's supposed to. That's kind of rare with 22 long rifle. But I'll take it. It's a lot more fun that way. All right. Next one is at 1046 feet per second. Well, it seemed to like that last one. That's not bad for 100 yards. All right. Hopefully this is going to be close. Not great. Not terrible. one 
This one is 1057 feet per second on the box. Let's see what she does. It's probably going to shoot a little high if it's true. Holy cow. You know, when I was loading these rounds, that lubricant feels thick. You can actually notice noticing a little bit of trouble with the, uh, the bolt cycling, too. Well, we'll take that one out of the running. We're gonna crank this one down two tenths because this one's probably gonna shoot really high. And this one's 1066 feet per second. A little vertical stringing on that one. Yeah, this barrel seems to like the slower stuff. Not bad. bad it looks like the 1045 and the 1046 probably had the best groups let me get these things measured up and then we'll get right back to you so I was kind of blown away at some of these group sizes pause it so you can check these out here's a picture uh, with the micrometer for scale that reads 0.47 uh, the group averages were just I, I mean unbelievable 0 0.66 0 0.68 Largest was a 102, and that was the uh, 1057, uh, 0.64 on the uh, 1066. I don't think I've ever had this good of a group average in one sitting. And this isn't even the 10X or the match. This is the $10 a box Sabre. I'm just kind of blown away at how well this rifle shoots now with this new stock and me being comfortable. When you spend good money on a rifle, this is how it should shoot. I can't tell you how much fun it is to shoot a rifle that is this accurate. I don't think I could have did a better job building it. I think it came out perfect, and I'm going to have a lot of fun with this rifle. All right, well, that's pretty much it for the video today. So if you like what you saw, please give it a big thumbs up, and thanks for watching.